What's going on you guys? Spencer here. We're back with another YouTube video. I'm super excited to say we're doing the new debut here at the Dirt Natural Challenge with the new team associated B4 and B4E. Um, it's been something that's been in the works for about a year and a half now. Um, so uh, this this video I want to show you the under the hood video of my Nitro Buggy. Uh, the Nitro Buggy main is just about to go off here in about uh, over an hour. Um, yesterday we got the e-buggy and truggy mains done, so we'll do under the hood of the RC8 B4E and the uh, RC8 B4 Nitro car. So come with me, we'll show you into the race trailer we brought to the Dirt Nitro Challenge. It's been pretty cold. It's definitely been something that's nice to have the new race trailer. <clears throat> <clears throat> We're gonna give uh, our camera gal a chair and uh, kind of show you my nitro buggy right here. Um, I've been super stoked. This is something that has been in the works for us for, like I said, over a year and a half now. Um, a lot of the new parts are new molded um, materials, new geometry in the front end. It's been something that Kurt Wenger and I and the crew back at the shop have designed for more of a, a C-Hub style car. It changes the kingpin inclination, which is something that's really super important. Um, it's a lot of nerd talk that um, kind of gets confusing over time. But no, I, I think as far as the car itself and what is different and what makes this a better car, um, I, the arm materials and the arm designs have changed. You can use a, the arm is, was designed around not using um, arm stiffener plates so you have the option to use a stiffener plates on the top and bottom as you can see underneath the the chassis you can put the plates in the chassis designs all new and different um, for the front kick up this front chassis kick up and chassis design helps the dirt not get stuck underneath the arm to change the droop as you're running for when the track is considered uh, quote we all call it chocolate cake um, the uh, the radio tray is the same as the old car. We felt that the radio tray design was something that was really not needed to be changed. Um, the steering geometry, as far as the steering Ackerman plates, are all the same. The steering knuckles, arms, upper arms, front tower, rear gearbox, front gearbox, and rear arms are all different. Um, the other new feature to the Nitro Buggy is the new front gearbox is actually different than the rear gearbox. The front gearbox actually has an increased center drive angle to keep the front drive line as straight as possible. That is to help with um, drive efficiency and keeps the front and rear drive tires more equal to each other when you're on the track. And we'll do an over the head video as we'll get her over the car as an underneath hood video. We got the Adam Drake OS82 engine. I'm rocking the J Concepts uh, recon tires for the Nitro Buggy main. We'll go work our way to the, the servos here. I got the Savox SB2290s. This is something that I run on all my Nitro vehicles. Super strong, super durable. I really can't complain. And then we'll go to the front end here, kind of move the car. With the new uh, AE car, they have their own uh, front wing design. It's super slick, nice and easy to cut out. Um, as you can see, I got the J Concepts. Uh, motor screw is what they call it. We'll kind of turn the wheel here. I'm running the steel lower pillow ball, aluminum front pillow ball. Kind of go to the rear end here. Um, I got the uh, no plates on the, any of the arms. That's something that with a like, super cold weather, the rigidity of the arm is already stiff enough to um, not be needed. And then we'll go to the back of the car here for the wing. This is the new um, team associated rear wing design. It's really lightweight. The cord is a little bit narrower. Uh, you have the ability to put the holes in it. They're actually dotted on the back so you can drill them and the RM2 wing buttons. And um, as you can see right here, I got the Protec switch. And if you can see on the corner, we got the brass rear weight as a setup tuning option. 
And that pretty much does it for the Nitro Buggy Kit. So before I forgot, I wanted to show you guys the new body design from Team Associated. Um, pretty sleek design. I actually did a lot of body testing um, with the car. Uh, this is a pretty neutral body. Uh, it looks pretty cool going around the track. It looks a little bit different because you have this scoop up here. A lot of the, the aero flow is it's pretty wide up on the front and it kind of slicks back to the back for um, downforce. Um, I got a lot of questions I got asked so far this weekend is if the J Concepts um, bodies do fit and I already tested it the current J Concepts bodies that they do sell for the RC8 um, .2 8 scale vehicles do fit on the car there's a little bit more trimming that you have to do to clear the front um, upper arm uh, mounts but the S15 body fits um, without a without a problem so you'll be good to go check check one two this can be in the video uh, <laughs> so anyways guys we are back in the video um, I haven't done a lot of videos in a long time so bear with me but we do have the RC8 B4 e buggy um, this is probably one of the projects that I can actually say I was the most excited for out of all the races that I do, the e-buggy classes are by far the biggest class of all the events, whether it's sportsman e-buggy, intermediate e-buggy, expert e-buggy. A lot of the guys just like running e-buggy. It's a little bit easier to get around the track as far as you don't need a pick guy. It's easy to charge. The maintenance on it's a lot, a lot different than the nitro cars. Um, our old platform was a, was a good platform, but it wasn't specifically designed around the e-buggy race racing itself as far as the most amount of efficiency the weight transfer the weight balance of the car we kind of used all of our chips into the table put it right in the middle and said, you know what we're going to design a specifically built e-buggy that would use some different pieces from the nitro car and just wanted to give the best to the customers and racers and right here is definitely where it's all about as you can see from traditional e-buggies we don't have, the, um, you have the option to do both configurations, the big brick pack in the front, the motor switches to the back, but as far as the most performance differences, they can see we're using the saddle pack batteries, using the Protec 6400 batteries. This lasts for sure over 10 minutes, um, plenty of runtime. Using the hobby wing motor here, hobby wing speed control, but I'm sure you guys are freaking out behind the screen. We are definitely a lot different with the way the configurations of the speed controls are in the motor, just to get the weight bias into a completely different um, location in the car, trying to get it to have um, the most amount of uh, weight, transfer, weight transfer to the front to have not much pitching weight. Um, of course, the geometries with the arms and pills, um, camber links and stuff is all the same as a nitro car, but the weight and distribution and where the electronics are placed are way different. So we'll have an overview video kind of showing you the differences here. Um, the motor isn't gonna be in the front. The speed control is gonna be in the opposite location as before. You have the servo super tucked in towards the front of the car and more um, in to the center line of the vehicle. You have the battery um, plates in the back where you can kind of choose where you want your batteries at. Um, after the last minute event in e-buggy yesterday, I really liked my batteries facing um, or positioning all the way back to kind of get more weight to the rear. And this is definitely something that will be a tuning option from different video or different um, track surfaces and conditions that we run on. Um, as far as the setup goes, the setup is pretty much the same as a nitro car as far as um, shock oil, pistons and, and et cetera. The only thing that's different is sometimes I like running um, different front springs and rear springs but as you can see I'm outfitting this car out I got uh, six place I believe in nitro or excuse me e-buggy from yesterday with the green recons I thought it was a good tire um, kind of flipped the car over to its underhood the the chassis is all different than the nitro vehicle because of the where the motors located um, it's not sharing a chassis um, there's a couple empty holes here that's because uh, of the other um, electronic setup that you can get like the old vehicle with your mo moving the motor to the other side of the 
of the car and using the brick pack. So you do have the option if you do really like the other the other brick pack if you can't get runtime. But for the ultimate performance, this is definitely the best setup possible. So to the body part, um, as you guys noticed, the Nitro Buggy body is a new design body. The E-Buggy is definitely a new look. Um, probably see that it's a lot narrower and that's because of the new side guards for the E-Buggy. Um, it's a completely different side guard than the Nitro car. They're a lot narrower to keep the weight more center line. And with that comes with a lot much narrower body. Most would probably say this looks like more of our 10 scale, like B64, B74 body styles. And I'm super excited to see what the other body manufacturers make. Um, pretty so pretty excited to see the J Concepts um, RC8 B4 E body that will come down the road. Um, I don't believe there's any current body that will fit this car. Maybe some of the techno bodies that J Concept sells, but. The body stuff is pretty cool. It looks completely different on the track. It's a whole new look. Um, and I'm pretty excited to get some more races on the car. Um, but for those of you guys who are watching, I hopefully this video kind of helps out. And I'm super excited for to get this into your hands. And um, yeah, I appreciate you guys tuning in. For those who don't know who I am, my name is Spencer Rifkin. Um, a lot of the video stuff that we're doing, Jay Combs has been a big help. Hannah behind the camera is always uh, nice having her around. I appreciate you guys tuning in, and we'll see you guys on the next one.